To give you a little synopsis about Lady Day at Emerson's Bar and Grill, um, it takes place in 1959 in Philadelphia. Lady Day, Billie Holiday, born 1915, and she dies July 17th, 1959. And this is an extraordinary life, uh, a, a legendary life, a life of tremendous artistry. She had tremendous challenges in her life, but when you start remembering someone over 60 years after their death, it's because of the profound impact in my feeling of the artistry not the things that really took her down at times or caused her injury at times in her life. And so it really is about this, this performance where very few people are gathered to hear this great lady at Emerson's Bar and Grill in Philadelphia. She's there with her pianist who functions as her manager, who functions as her pianist, and who functions also as her lover. And so it's a very, very kind of robust interior drama, not just the drama that we see as an audience through the songs and the wonderful monologues that are to be delivered by the inimitable Carol Foreman. Uh, and so that's generally the, the shape and nature of what this work is. Her journey through song, her journey through really pouring her heart out. The music for Lady Day is very personal. She talks about, she has to sing the way she feels. Um, and I think uh, what Lani Roberts and the writer has done is so beautifully crafted and interwoven these personal stories and challenges and experiences of Billie Holiday and match them with music that uh, articulates each particular experience in her life. Um, and the music, of course, is iconic. I mean, God Bless the Child, uh, Strange Fruit, which was essentially the first protest song uh, that I believe really helped to ignite the civil rights movement here in America. We're talking about songs that transcend period, we're talking about songs that, again, music being a universal language, every theme that we hear in these lyrics are, are, are things that are terribly human. They're not black, they're not white, they're not Asian, they're not Latino, they're human. I'm also excited because I love this space. The intimacy of this space uh, really gives us the feeling of that small nightclub. Um, and the idea that we uh, talk about in the play is that Billy really wanted a small nightclub of her own where she could perform for her friends. We, we get to capture that again. So I'm really excited to be close to people again uh, for this performance. This, this is the third show of the evening. So there've been three sets. This is the third show. And so it's late and there is a freedom in it. In, in vaudeville and the times of the minstrelsy, there was a thing called the midnight ramble. And that's the time when you could, you could speak blue. You could use language that you wouldn't otherwise use at the second or first show. Well, first of all, what I would love for people to take away from this experience of seeing Lady Day at Emerson's Bar and Grill is seeing Billie Holiday with new eyes, getting to look at her not only as a great uh, artist, but uh, an historical figure and who she was in the journey of our story as Americans, as uh, Black Americans, as, as a country. It gives us an opportunity to look at our own personal legacy and what we're reckoning with, but also to find a different type of appreciation and empathy for Billie Holiday. So there are differences each night, and um, I'm always thrilled by that because Carol, um, particularly, she is, um, she's so courageous. She's so tremendously courageous as an artist, and she's an exceedingly well-prepared artist. And when that's undergirded by the pianistic magnificence of Damon Carter, it can be very, very special. So I'm looking forward to that, and it is my hope that audience who, audiences who come to the Signet will take away precisely what I've just expressed.